Hi, you guys. Welcome to my next sew along. This time we're going to be working on Butterick 6873, this really cute um, dress with drop shoulder and uh, sleeve variations as well as skirt variations. And because this is such a beginner friendly pattern, um, easy for no matter your sewing experience, whether you've never sewn garments before, but you've sewn quilts or other things, um, I think this pattern would be great for you to um, enter into garment sewing. Come over to the dark side with us over here. Um, if you haven't already, go ahead and download your Butterick 6873 Sew Along Workbook. It's completely free, available um, on my website. I have a link to it in the description box below. Um, this is what we are going to use as kind of like our guide, uh, for the next few days as we begin to make this dress together. So I have a, a new page added. If you've done my sew alongs before, I added this page here. It's a project planner where you can write out sort of what your goals are, the timeline you have, some fabric options, your sizing, any alterations that you want to make, as well as the project materials and a checkbox as to whether you have it on hand or you need to buy it. Just a great way to stay organized and get organized before you head to the store or head online so you don't buy anything that you don't need because we've all been there, right? Okay, the next page is the ultimate project checklist and we are gonna be working our way through this. This is kind of like an, a reiteration of the materials list, um, but today we're gonna be working through the prepping list we're gonna start with the fast fit worksheet. If you're unfamiliar with this process, this is my fast fit workbook. Link to this in the description box as well. It comes with, I don't even remember, like 40 or so different fast fit worksheets, which looks like this. You can buy the sheet individually, or you can buy the whole workbook depending on how much you plan on using the worksheets. All right, so we're gonna be going through this today um, with the pattern. The, the reason why this works and this is able to get you a better fit the first time is because it takes into consideration the pattern's design ease, like what the designer wants it to fit like, as well as wearing ease. And it takes those two things into consideration. And then that allows you to kind of reasonably and sensibly pick a size rather than just going, uh, I don't know, I kind of think it's this one, but I'm not really sure. We do a little bit of math. Actually, the math on this one I found to be very, very simple and easy. Um, but in the end, you're going to feel a lot more confident in the size that you pick because of doing these few calculations. So let me walk you through my fast fit worksheet for Butterick 6873, which is here, um, and show you how I arrived at the size that I chose. I have gone ahead and taken my measurements. I take my measurements every single time I do a fast fit worksheet. Normally, there are not many changes at all, but if there are, it's important to go ahead and catch them now, obviously, um, especially if it's been a minute since you made something for yourself, which for me, I haven't made anything for my bodice in a while. I've been making pants lately, so um, important to take your measurements every single time. Don't skimp on that. Um, and then we need to refer to the body chart. So that is what is on the pattern itself. So if I am a 40 inches, I'm 40 inches in the bust, that corresponds with size 18 on the body chart measurement. So I write down size 18 and that equals 40 inches. So I know that's one for one. My waist is 34 and a half, which falls in between an 18 and a 20. So I'm gonna go down, always size down if you fall in between, especially in big four. Um, so that means I'm an 18 again and that equals 33 inches according to this chart. So, and then I'm a 45 in the hip. And again, that's in between the two sizes. I'm gonna size down, so that's a size 20. That is a 44 inch hip. Now, the hip on this pattern and the bust a little bit don't really matter. Um, the waist, I think, is what is most important. So that's what I'm gonna focus on the most. Um, when you pull out your pattern pieces and you look at your, um, bodice front piece this piece here you can see they have provided finished garment measurements for the bust that's this one and then the waistline is down here at the waistline indicated by that so that's what we're using for the finished garment measurements they do also have them on the envelope as well if you want to refer to those you can they don't include the finished hip measurement because it's kind of insignificant um, because the skirt is so a-line 
All right, so now we'll go to the finished garment measurement chart. And for the bust, size 18, 43 inches. So we write down 43 inches. And then for the size 18, the waist is 33 and a half. All right, now, and this is not applicable. All right, so now we're calculating ease, and that's the difference between the body chart size and the finished measurement size. So the body chart size for the bust is 40, finished measurements is 43, so that's a three inch difference, three inches of ease in the bodice, and the waist, there is a half inch of ease. Um, because like I said, it is a very close fitting waist if you look at it on her. If it's the waist the closest, there's a little bit more room here and there's a lot of room here. So the intended fit is how the designer figures this should fit everybody. And that is number one plus number four. So it's your measurements plus the pattern ease, ignoring everything that they have determined body size should be or pattern size should be. So it should be 43 in the bust and 34 and a half plus a half is 35. Look at me not even needing my calculator. Um, and now we are gonna compare number three, the finished garment measurements to the intended fit. So 43 and 43 are the same. So I know for sure that I'm cutting a size 18 in the, that's not inches, size 18 in the bust. And then in the waist, there is a two and a half inch difference. But remember, I sized down here in the body chart size. So if I go to size 20 in the body chart size, that's gonna take me up to 35 inches right here for a size 20. So I can write down 35 inches, do all of this again. Finish measurements are for a 20, 35 and a half. And the pattern ease is the same as it should be. And the intended fit is also the same. So if I make the size 20, comparing the 35 and a half to the 35, that's a lot closer and a lot less work than going sizing down to the size 18. So I am going to remove half an inch from the waist for a size 20. So I've got a size 20 here. Why do I keep doing inches? Um, removing half an inch from the side seams, which is really only, gosh, an eighth of an inch on each one. Is there a center back? There's a center back as well, which usually my back is like narrower than my front because I have like a full, like a a protrusion, a belly protrusion. So maybe I'll just do this from center back and that'll get me my little bit that I need to remove from the center back. Okay, and then my hip, I'm still gonna do a 20. Um, so that's how you do the fast fit worksheet. One thing to note is if, let's say the size to cut here is more than one pattern size in between each category, 18, 20, 22, for example. If you go 18, 22, 26, that's gonna be a problem. Um, I don't like to jump more than one size in between each category. So 18 to 20, that's one category. 20 to 22, that's one category. That's fine. If you're jumping more than two sizes in between each one of those, then I would consider like if you are making a 22 in the waist, for example, I would consider doing a 20 in the bust and then doing a small bust adjustment. Does that make sense? I would figure out how to get these, you know, all in line with just one size, um, only going up one size each category by doing the different small and full adjustments that you would need to do there. Um, all right, the last thing I wanna check is the sleeve on this pattern is a drop shoulder. Um, I don't know which version I'm making, but I don't think I'm gonna have any problems with the bicep because again, it's a drop shoulder and then you either add on a band, you add on the sleeve or you add on the ruffle. So again, I think I'm gonna be good there. That's one thing you're gonna have to just check in fitting. You might need to like carve out some of this under the arm, but nothing we can really do about measuring for that right now. All right, so there you have it. Um, like I said, it's a pretty straightforward little like path that, that we go on, a little bit of a journey that we go on. 
but hopefully when you get to the end, you arrive at a place where you feel a lot more confident about the size that you were gonna pick and you know whether or not you're gonna be swimming in the pattern. And if that's something you like, that's great. If it's not something you like, you can kind of analyze that at this point. Okay, and one last thing before you go, if you flip to the next to the last page in the workbook, then you know there's this little social media checklist. So if you have a sewing account um, and you feel so inclined, follow along with this. Um, today's uh, prompt is to post a picture of your the pattern and then the fabric that you're using so people can kind of get excited about your project. Um, in the next video, we are going to be talking about alterations. I am going to be getting out my ditto form, my trusty little gal here, and uh, sort of like tissue fitting the pattern after it's cut out onto my ditto form. So once you get your size figured out from the Fast Fit Worksheet, meet me back here and we'll talk about alterations.